Welcome, welcome, welcome to the Pew. The Pew. The Bryant Park edition. Right. Some of you will recognize the carousel behind us because we were here before. And, and we'll be here again. Um, some and of you may not recognize it. If you do and you don't recognize it, we're going to treat you all the same because we love you, blah, 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 blah. So, there's Shakespeare in the park, yeah. but they're not dressed up in Elizabethan-style clothing. Oh, my gosh. You know, I was with somebody the other day, a, a young homosexual person, and he was in, in his late 20s, and he said something that was sort of punny in a kind of intellectual way. I said, oh, my gosh, the, that, you sound like a modern-day Oscar Wilde. He had no idea who Oscar Wilde was. Uh, well, I'm not surprised by that. Just um, just a couple of days ago, I told somebody I thought their skirt really looked like Stephen Sprouse. Oh, no, and they wow. didn't know who Stephen Sprouse was. Well, okay, I, I mean, I, that's shocking to me, but it's not as shocking as Oscar Wilde because Oscar right, Wilde... Because you kind of have to read that in high school, yeah, I well, think. Yeah, well, yeah. I mean, and especially if you're gay, you, you kind of like, you gravitate toward that. And it's like, he, he's one of the first... Stephen like, Sprouse was gay too. Yeah, I know, but he was around and, for... And more, I don't know, I don't know which one could be argued to be more have been more fabulous Steven Sprouse or Oscar Wilde well probably Os- he had, it Oscar Wilde had a larger body of work let's say <laughs> yeah. and uh, like so, somebody else uh, but um, if you're and it depends on if you're talking about like an intellectual level or a fashion-y kind of thing because Oscar well, Wilde fashion is, is intellect it is some, it should be but it's good um, I could argue. I could. I could uh, show you some pictures of some of my neighbors in Patterson and and, um, <laughs> and their fashion choices. Um, but I guess in, even then, it's intellect. It's a lack of intellect. Um, but um, speaking of Patterson, mm-hmm. what of the you, hell's going on with of, you and some, Patterson? Some of you may be wondering, well, why is it the pew on every day? Why? Why can't I see Michael and Ernie's shining faces every morning, like I used to? And we'll, I'll have to say that, sadly, in this case, it's all Ernie's fault. <laughs> because um, Ernie has not been there to wake me up every day, and to be with my coffee, and to get me out of bed, and to get me here to Manhattan. To yes, I'm here. busy waking myself up and getting my own coffee. Have you ever heard anything more and selfish? Forcing myself to go to work. Have you ever heard anything more selfish? <laughs> no, the actual reason is, besides Ernie's blunders, um, I made an an uncharacteristically thoughtless blunder of my own. Um, actually, it's not a thoughtless blunder, but but do you remember that I was did, that we told the viewers about the art factory? Right, you yeah. were there, and then there was a problem. And did, we, did we tell them about the problem at all? I don't know because I think you were trying to patch up your relations. Yeah, okay. with the art factory, we we got as far as like you scratching up walls. Oh, at, at the at the, uh, at the other, at the other one, place, at the, the artist lofts, <laughs> and losing all your uh, furniture. Right. But we didn't get to the part about the um, how you poisoned your relationship with the art factory. Well, I would say I would I would I would change that. It may have been a, it may have been a poison swamp to begin I, with. I would uh, yeah I was I would say how my how the relationship became poisoned is, is the way I would say it because um, without assigning. The addition of poison. Don't anyway. you wish it was like a, we, one day we could do like a We Wish episode or, or I Love Lucy where you have to say the truth every, every like every time. <laughs> anyway, that, that, that's a reference what? You're to. You're finally going to tell it, the truth. It's a reference to a television show that, that some of some yeah. of you kids no probably one's ever heard don't of. know of. Yeah, but it's um, right there show. with Steven Sprouse and Oscar Wilde. Yeah. So um, the uh, the art factory was run by a, a married couple, doomed to, doomed to, be, to begin with, um, a straight married couple. I mean. We, get we, lo- we love straight married couples. We love straight married couples. Um, Couldn't exist without them. Except that I wasn't told about the wife until um, the, the night of the dinner party that was welcoming me to the art factory. And um, so we got off on a b- bad start because I didn't know who she was. She was sitting there at the dinner table and um, I was introducing her to around, you know, I was, I was, I'm sorry, I was introducing Dave, the owner, to all the people at the dinner party. Some press, media, and some, you know, uh, uh, Satanic Barbie and Chasing Chaos were there and everything. And I was introducing David, the owner, to everybody, and I noticed this very stern-looking woman with blonde hair sitting at the other side of the table, just like scowling, like. <laughs> and I almost went up and I, I would ask her to leave if she was going to ruin my dinner party like that. Until I was told that that's David's wife, Donata. So you were told it was the most important person in the room. Uh, well, uh, uh, people did tell me that for many reasons. <laughs> um, I, she's notoriously difficult to get along with. And, um, Worse than you? I'm actually not. I'm, I'm easy to get along with if you'll put up with my eccentricities. 
<laughs> okay. Um, Donata is not easy to get with, get along with, even if you put on put, go up go along with her eccentricities. She, um, I've not met a person that says she is. So, um, look interested. So, um, that night though, it was the beginning of the end because um, I then started introducing her to people because I had already introduced David. So now I was saying, this is David's wife, Donata. And the first time I said that, she said, David's wife has a name that doesn't begins with David's wife. <laughs> so I kind of, you know, you know, faux pas. Yeah. Well, kind of. I guess she was right, but she didn't have to say it like that, you know. Because you should have called her Mrs. David, whatever. Yeah, yeah. This yeah. <laughs> <laughs> is David Moneybags. I never could understand how they could do that in the fifties. Well, you, know? you did it in the. 20 teens. No, but I mean in the, you know, like, like <laughs> Mr. 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 and Mrs. Douglas Fairbanks or whatever, you know. So, Joan uh, Crawford does that a lot in her book. So, um, <laughs> anyway. Anyway, uh, we're going to take a break right now. Okay. We're to be right continued. Now. And continued and continued and continued. And now a word from our sponsor. Welcome back, back to the Pew, where you're going to learn in a nutshell the meat of the, the problem, meat of the issue. So, long story short, we did not get along that night. Um, I Or any night thereafter. Well, no, 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 the next night we did. But um, I ended up crying in my office, and um, some people who were there, um, Christopher Cameron from the New York Post, and Gregory De La Haba from um, uh, uh, his, his magazine, uh, I think Quiet Lunch is the name of it. I will we'll fix it if it's not. Um, but it's a nice kind of like glossy art magazine. And he was going to write about um, about my... They're all going to write about my going over to the art factory. We're going to get a lot of publicity. We're going to get... We booked a lot of things. And Natasha was there with someone from NBC that wanted to rent the place out for a reality show. And um, so the next day, Donata uh, made up to me. She said, you know, I apologize. I, I thought that you were here to take my job and to try and... You know, take my position. This is my baby. I started this place. I'm surprised my husband didn't tell you about me, but she didn't. So um, we made up, and she gave me a really nice job. She gave me. Um, they were redoing the whole place, re remodel, uh, re remodeling, I suppose, um, uh, the whole place. It's a 26 building complex, and she gave me the job of redesigning the lounge and the and the um, and the cafe. The nine million dollar project it was ecstatic. They're going to use my artwork, giant. Uh, cutouts of my paintings and I was going to paint more of the celebrities who worked there well so I, I she looked at my portfolio and she saw the piece that I'd done with J.J. Bryan the, uh, the the cross with the McDonald's logos and she commented on it I said yeah yeah I did that a couple weeks ago I didn't mention J.J. just because it was a pa kind of passing you know so the next day I bring in J.J. because I want him to work on a room she sees the same piece in his in his portfolio and she says oh um, you have my and I know she did this to like she said, oh, 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 I like that. You have Michael's artwork in your portfolio. And he said, oh, no, that's mine. She completely flipped out, hyperventilating, going back and forth. He said, oh, I cannot abide by, by this. My plagiarism of artists is ruining the artist community. I cannot abide by And she said, she pointed me, she said, and you, you, this is your second, your second demerit. At the dinner party the next day, Jason Chaos had gone on Instagram and said, "We're running the art factory." <laughs> so she made me have to take that down, and because it went along with her fears of me taking over, you know. So she said, "You and that funny man with the funny, that tall man with the funny eyes." That was Jason. She said, "This is your second. This is your second black mark." What does that have to do with us not filming the pew? Well, because well, I, I have to actually know what's going on. So um. She, you know, she kept saying, people who work for me, people who work for me. And I was like, you know what, Donata, I'm a little bit uncomfortable with you saying, she said, oh, you're uncomfortable. Well, then I suggest you leave. If you're uncomfortable, I suggest you leave. When I'm uncomfortable, I leave. And it's, so, you know what? I, I left. And I, I didn't, I just, I just didn't want to grovel to her, you know. And, and Gregory Della Hobbit and other people have told me she's just impossible to work with. And so I just, you know, I left. And um, I thought they'd come chasing after me, but they didn't. And um, so I walked out, like, with my, you know, computer and phone in hand and I'll send for my things I'll be at the club and um, 
so since then I kind of like didn't have a place to live and um, which makes things like filming the pew and other things kind of hard to do so where um, are you living well I was James St. James said you were living under a bridge well that's a little bit hyperbolic um, and he's going to be mad at you. Was it thank, a pedestrian thank walkway? Thank God for me. Thank God for me. That he, you're the one who blurted that out, not me. Was it a because pedestrian was, walkway? No, it was a bridge. But I was told not to blurt that out to anybody in the media. So I didn't blurt it out. But because it's going to be in Party Monster 2. Uh. So um, I was first staying in hotels um, that were very... Well, they were cheap for New York, you know, $125, $150 a night. But that adds up and it was kind of eating up all my money and um because they'd give me some money to leave uh uh, uh the first building and so i had some money saved but uh it, when that ran out i was like hustling all day long trying to raise 150 dollars to pay for the hotel and then by the time i'd raise that money it was time to like spend you know raise another hundred dollars so all my time was like, spent trying to survive and be living in hotels and eventually that money ran out and i couldn't really deal with the the, the stress that it was causing and um, so I, I started going on grinder hookups just to have some place to sleep. Um, and um, you know it's funny when you go on a grinder hookup and you wanna and you wanna leave, they want you to stay. But when you wanna stay, they want you to leave. <laughs> so I had to pretend that I wanted to leave. It's the law of desire. Yeah, I would have to pretend that I wanted to leave. And so they'd say, "No, stay, stay." I wish it worked, by the way. So I did that, I was going back and forth between that and people's couches. I didn't want to really publicize it too much because I didn't want it to end up on page six and I didn't want it to like you know it would be embarrassing so um the day the bridge episode yes you know I was coming from the Bronx and um I had exhausted every gay person in the Bronx as far as writer goes and um I had no other place to go so I was walking into Manhattan and I was crossing I think the Madison Avenue Bridge the third Avenue Bridge and um and I had all, all this like bags with me and backpack and food and everything and I just wanted to, my legs were tired, I just wanted a place to sit down and away from the maddening crowds. So I took, uh, I went down this ramp on the highway, and there was a, uh, like a construction site down there. And I just walked along until I saw, I saw a place where I could sit down. And I must have passed out because I woke up the next afternoon at like 3 o'clock. And um, it was like a completely different scene of like jackhammer and, and like people walking around and everything. And I woke up and I was like, oh my god, I'm living under a bridge. Um, so that was kind of a, um, was it an epiphany or a wake-up call? Well, um, time will tell. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> was it a rock bottom? It doesn't, uh, or, or do you still have further to go? Uh, I think, I think it was, I think that'll be a rock bottom. Okay. We're um, calling it a rock bottom. We're calling it a rock bottom. Um, and, but time will tell. Um, I don't think there's much to go after sleeping under a bridge. However, unintentionally. Yeah, you can only go six feet under when you're under this, a bridge. Oh yeah, yeah. Well, six feet more, you mean? Right. Yeah. Um, okay. Well, on that happy note, um, <laughs> we'll we see will, you next time. Bye. <laughs> bye.